of lords over our life now holy spirit we ask that you continue to work in our midst this morning in jesus name amen a pleasant good morning to all in the house of god thank you for joining us this morning i just would like everyone to be seated and i'd like all of the males in the house once you are biological male xy chromosome if you can all stand this morning if you're a male just stand all the males all the males just stand and let's just honor them let's just give them a round of applause and honor them it is a privilege to have men in the house this morning happy father's day amen thank you to those who are fathers you may be seated and for the young ones of course we know most of us will endeavor by god's grace to be fathers amen so even though they're not fathers now eventually at some point in time if not biological they are always spiritual fathers amen so this morning uh we continue with a new series that we are starting called the feast of the lord as we go into that this morning i want to encourage you if you want to become prof really proficient this week read leviticus right so anybody who's writing leviticus chapter 23 right so as we go into our sermon this morning that's our base scripture leviticus 23 we'll just read a couple of verses and if we can all stand please turn with your bibles if you have a smartphone that's fine with me i want everyone reading with me it's just i believe we are reading four verses leviticus chapter 23 Amen. Right. So let's read together. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. Verse 3. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of complete rest. An official day for the holy assembly it is the lord's sabbath day it must be observed wherever you live last verse in addition to the sabbath these are the lord's appointed festivals the official days for a holy assembly that are, are to be celebrated at their proper times each year brother dave can you pray Heavenly Father and God, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity where we can come before your throne. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. And Father, even as your servant would speak this morning, Lord, we pray that by your Holy Spirit that you would speak to us. Lord, minister unto us. Lord, thank you for all the fathers who are here in the midst. Lord, we pray your blessings over their lives. Lord, even for those who are father figures as well, Lord, we pray that you would bless them. Continue to strengthen them, Father God, and let them continue to shine their Sister who just raised your hand. You I know somebody who don't like to lime at all. Okay, so hands up all of those who like to lime, please. Very good. It's not a sin to lime, right? It is actually a very healthy and normal thing to get together with friends and relax. Lime, enjoy, right? So I'll tell you something. Uh, um, what year COVID uh, started in the world? December what? 2019. So in December 2019, uh, one of my friends had a uh, birthday party and uh, we were invited and it stands out in my mind as one of the best birthday parties I've ever been to anybody here ever you ever had a perfect evening the weather was good the food was good if let me tell you the kind of food we had we had we had a uh, is it a uh, sheep brother Dave a whole sheep being roasted and was it a 
a pig, whole pig being roasted, and it was food, any kind of food you could imagine. And then, of course, it was our best friends, and we were all literally by the shelter. I didn't want to leave. You never want, ever went to somewhere like that, you're having so much fun, and you don't want to leave. And that was the end of my lineman, because, of course, we know by March the next year, COVID hit, and, of course, now we're in a different space. You know, you go out now, you're, you're, you're limited in so many different ways. But for all of us, I'm sure, before COVID, if I, I want you to go back to before COVID and think about what was the most fun times you had with people that you loved. Might it have been birthday celebrations? Maybe? Before COVID, anybody had fun things that you did with people you really enjoyed? I'm sure a lot of us have a special... Was it, another question. When you get a calendar, you know in December we get calendars for the next year, what's the first thing you look at? When the public holiday is on, what's the next thing? When your birthday falling, not so? Anybody does that? Right, so this morning we're going to look at a different type of calendar. We're going to look at God's calendar. Now, I'll tell you something. It might not at first seem like the most interesting topic, but I'll tell you something as well. It's a pattern that God gave in the Old Testament that I believe it was given basically 3,500 years ago. This morning, I want us to see if there's any relevance in our lives today in the 21st century. Good. So I'm going to hit you with a statistic. Let's read a statistic for anybody who can't read, right? It says, did you know that if a child is the first person in a household to become a Christian, there is a 3.5% probability that everyone else in the household will follow. The statistic also says if a mother is the first to become a Christian, there is a 17% probability that everyone else in the household will follow. However, if the father is the first person in the household to become saved, there is a 93% probability everyone else in the household will follow. This morning, men, I want to encourage and remind you, if you want your family to be saved, you are the one to set the example. Not only that, you are the one in the family who will have the biggest influence on who your family worships, when your family worships and how your family chooses to honor God. Amen? That is to me a mind-blowing thing. Because imagine, we live in a society, do you know, um, statistically speaking, Mother's Day is one of the most highly attended services in church. Flip side, Father's Day is one of the lowest attendances possible. Right? Most people don't pay great attention to fathers, not so? Anybody went out yesterday? I, I usually go to the market on Saturday mornings, and the one, the two mornings I do not like to go to the market is the day before Mother's Day, and the, the weekend before, you see the day before um, Christmas, that Christmas week, it's like people only remember to eat when it's a holiday. They mark every, the, same, the same thing every single Saturday, but Mother's Day I remember very clearly. I tell everybody, I don't know what going on. I don't personally do it. I don't like too much crowds now because of COVID, right? When I go in the market, I don't want nobody pushing me or touching me at all, right? You know, when, it, when, I, when I went to Mother's Day this week, um, this year, to the market, oh, from the time we get to the car park, it's push, 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 right? When I went yesterday, guess what? Normal market, you know, normal stories. It's almost like the fathers are not so, are the fathers less important than the mothers? No, they are not, right? But we learn some things. Of course, we know we live in a society where culture is what shoots us in the foot all the time. Anyway, let's go. I'll hit you with a question now. Anybody want an MCQ is? George, what's an MCQ? Multiple choice question. Right. So the, the question is, don't answer yet, right? But in your brain and your mind, I want you to answer the question for me. The question is, God gave God, mankind the feasts in the Old Testament, but the New Testament says we are not under the law, but we are under grace. Should we be A, doing more than they did in the Old Testament, B, doing less than they did in the Old Testament, C, live the same way as they did, D, it doesn't matter to God. Anybody here? Grew up watching Sesame Street. Anybody remember this, this song? One of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. If you ask me, 
if you ask me, I'll tell you if it is right. One of these does not belong for sure, right? So by the end of today, you will tell me which one definitely does not belong. So the question is, right? Is there one right answer in this? Is there one wrong answer? Or, or some right and some wrong? Right? So we get, we get that question in our mind. Everybody ready to move on? Good. What is more important to us in the present day? I'm taking a poll this morning. The Old Testament or the New Testament? Raise your hands if you think it's the Old. Right. Old Testament, New Testament, or both. Let's go. Anybody, what's more important to us right now? The Old Testament, yes or no? The New Testament? Both. All right. Good. Jesus, one-tenth of the, the words that we quote from Jesus was from the Old Testament. Of the 1,800 verses that are reported that Jesus spoke, 180 of them were references from the Old Testament. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is inspired by God and is beneficial for teaching, for rebuke, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be fully equipped, capable for every good work. It is my sincere belief that every single word in the Bible was put there for a reason and, and serves as an equal importance. However, there are mysteries in the Bible. And of course, because there are different genres in the Bible, and genres would mean, if you have a newspaper, I'll give you a simple explanation. If you have a newspaper, is it really, what's the first thing most of us would gravitate to? The men would go to the sports. Some of us, the first thing I like to go is the comics, right? Because I like jokes, right? Some of us like to read, um, news the headline then some of us will go to the commentary but we know sometimes some of them are technical right not all the articles in the papers are same so this is how i want you to look at the bible it's a different types of genres the old testament is a lot harder to understand than the new testament that's a given right but what i want us to begin to open our minds to understand is the old testament is full of treasure literally full of treasure that we can apply to our lives and it can benefit us now Good. So the feast of the Lord constitutes not only holy days, but it's an outline of God's calendar. When does our calendar officially start? January 1st. Right? And when does it end? Right. The financial year ends when, Sister Joanna? September 30th, and it, the, the new financial year starts. Right. So I want us to see, that's our calendar. What I'm going to share today is God's calendar. If you remember what I just read in Leviticus 23, he said, these are my feasts. He, he didn't say it was the Jews' feast. He said it was my feast. And we'll note something very careful and very prophetic. Jesus fulfilled the first three feasts to the day that they were celebrated in Israel. I'll go through each of them eventually, but this morning as we introduce what's going on, I want us to see something very clear. God set up a calendar, and this is the calendar we believe that mankind is going to follow. It, there, there's a belief that this, these seven feasts, and it's seven feasts celebrated over seven months, it is actually the outline of God's calendar from the beginning of mankind to eternity. And that's a sentence we'll have to break down. Good. So the feasts are also called God's biblical calendar. How many feasts are there? Seven. They take place over the course of seven months. And it reminds it, it the, the purpose for the Jews was, it reminded them of their dependence on God. Good. So let's read the verse now. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy, convocations. A convocation is a holy gathering, right? A gathering of people. These are, what word is that there? So, so this is God saying in this verse that these are his feasts that he's establishing, yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. So we see that very clear. It's God, God is the one who established these feasts. And he said, these are my feasts. Right, so the feast means an appointed time. I'll introduce you to some Jewish words soon. It's moed. It's a holy convocation. It's a gathering of people. I want you to begin. Remember what I said? Our sermon is entitled God's Patterns. Church is not my idea. 
this gathering of all of us if you watch very carefully from the old testament times god had a gathering he had a gathering he's a god of community and he called his people even from then 3500 years ago to gather together to worship him there were three um, festivals called the pilgrimage festivals all the men were supposed to leave their house and go to jerusalem to the temple to worship it was so important every festival was a time of rest verse 3 we just read it says god said to them the seven days are sabbath now we are not um, we don't hold to that whole thing of celebrating the sabbath and not doing anything but it is really a healthy thing to do you cannot work all the time and your body if you don't give it rest will tell you when it is too tired and you've overworked it anybody here especially you know like christmas time you overwork you overwork you overwork and by the time you can, really and truly there are many years i didn't enjoy christmas you know because by the time you finish clean and the day you cook a hundred things you just tired how you can enjoy it right now god told them specifically that this was a time of rest it was a time each single festival or feast was a time where they would have to stop and worship good so let's look at something really here's a piece i want you to get anybody here ever saw a video or any sort of um video on youtube where they, they said that the lord might come in september october yes or no no all right so we'll go through that so Passover, Jesus died on Passover. We know that, right? On Leaven Bread starts right after. I'll, I'll, like I say, each one I'll go through. I want you to see Jesus fulfilled the Passover the exact day it started. He fulfilled the unleavened Bread feast. He fulfilled the first fruits feast, which was the first Sunday after the resurrection. When did Jesus was resurrected on Sunday, right? So I want us to begin to see these feasts were given 3,500 years ago. How much years ago would you approximate Jesus came and died about? 2000, right? So 1500 years later, Jesus appears on the scene. And every single feast thus far, until now Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus ascended, who, who descended? The Holy Spirit. So we see here, and they were celebrating a feast. Every single event in Jesus' life, big event so far, fell on the exact day that they were celebrating a feast so it appears that the feasts have more to do than we think just basically not just a, a something that the jews celebrated 2500 years ago done the story good seven feasts passover on leaven bread first was pentecost trumpets atonement and tabernacles you'll get to know those real um, um real real good so far but let's go passover every single time god delivered the children of israel from something big he wanted them to celebrate it he now this was do you know your birthday comes around every year yes and we celebrate our birthday every year there's the same thing with these feasts. These feasts were meant to be celebrated. These seven feasts were meant to be celebrated every year. The instruction was every single person who is a Jew was supposed to celebrate those feasts. That's a different option we have now, but they had no option. Everybody was. Right? So Passover was the celebration of Israel's deliverance out of Egyptian bondage. Eleven bread, the leaving of Egypt. Remember, they would have. Um, Anybody have a baked bread before? You bake and burn and tell everybody, don't slam any door. Don't shake the cupboard. Don't anybody have a baked bread like that and, and somebody slam a door and then the bread just No? When you bake and bread, you can open and close the oven and make noise. No, you have to just leave that bread. Right? They can't open and close that oven. So it's the same thing on leaven bread without the east, right? First fruits, crossing of the Red Sea, Pentecost, giving of the commandments at Mount Sinai, Russia. blowing the shofar the day of atonement the priest entered that was a holy day i'll tell you something in israel when they celebrate this feast apparently everything of course let's go back in israel right now on the sabbath day and when they celebrate the sabbath day they say literally public transport shuts down on the day of atonement in israel it's a day of praying and fasting for those who celebrate and they said literally you can't see nobody on the streets 
when they celebrate these feasts, many Jewish families, it's a family affair. They say on Friday, and of course we know, um, all their, their calendar, God said evening, mo morning. So therefore, they, they fa the, every single feast starts the evening of the day. On a Friday evening in Israel, it's a f it begins, they say, many husbands take flowers home to their wives. They plan a special meal and spend it together as a family, eating together. I want us to begin to see God very well understood that his children came out of an Egyptian culture. I want to tell you something about the Egyptian culture. They were a polytheistic culture. They were a culture that had no respect for family. Right? It was very common for all the people to have that out, what they call an outside somebody. They, they didn't respect, there was lots of idol worship and a lot of it was immorality and carnality. When God delivered his children from Egypt, that was a physical deliverance, but there was a spiritual deliverance that needed to take place too. There was a spiritual deliverance that needed to take place too because their hearts grew up only seeing something different. Idol worship, ignorance of family. We see here God set up something for his children to understand. Family is very important. Family celebrating together, important. Families celebrating together as a corporate something important. And he set it up in the tabernacles. Good. So now, while I will explain this further, this calendar explains when God set up the feast, you know what he did? He started an entirely new calendar. The first feast, which is Passover, he said this is to be a first month. That is the first month in their religious calendar. It literally is a new calendar going to set up. Right? So let's see. In March and April, that is the first month for them. It, like I say, it's plenty for you to take. But I just want you to note that they do not follow our Gregorian calendar. January, March, February, March, April. They have a different calendar. And I want us to know very carefully it's God's calendar. Right? So, I'll give you some basic facts about the feast, and here's what we're going to understand. It has a prophetic role. It points to Jesus. Jesus fulfilled all the spring feasts, and it is believed that he will fulfill all the fall feasts. It is a shadow of things to come. When you see a shadow of something, what does it tell you? Is that if I see if you see my a shadow of my hand, is that me? Is me the shadow or you know I am coming? What is something coming? That is what the old testament is a shadow of something that is coming. Good. It was a time for worship. Do you know that they had to stop everything and worship together? Wasn't that isn't that interesting that even now, so many years ago. We still do that, of course, in a different setting, but I want you to note very carefully. God said it is his day of, it is his day, it is his feast, and therefore, he determines how we celebrate it. And part of that celebration is corporate worship. There is nothing as precious to me as worshiping with my family. When we leave home on a, on a Sunday morning and we start coming down, I tell Hope to play worshipful music, right? And it is such a thing. I don't know what is more precious to me than hearing my family worship God together and hearing the voices. There's very few things that's precious to me. Our voices are very precious to God. And indeed, as we come into the house of God, we know that our worship is something precious to God. It's a community event. It was a community event. Do you know when the pilgrimage fell, literally, if they had to be in Jerusalem, but they have had to cease work, God's instruction was cease work. You have friends, when they have special occasions in their um, churches, they take time off to go pray and fast. They literally take time off when they have, I'm sure most of you must have some friends in different religious um, factions, and when they have their, their, their little conventions, they take time off, not so? They had to stop and they had to cease. He was setting a pattern. Do you know if you leave a man to himself, do you know what he will become? Self-centered and self-serving. It will all be about me, myself, and I. You leave a man on his own. Anybody here ever had to deal with only children? 
Sister Michelle, the teachers, they will be able to tell you, you know when you're dealing with our only child or no? Why? They don't know how to share. You ever deal with our only child? They don't know how to share at all. That's why I, my, my um, thing is, right, if you don't make an ex-child and you have one child, you have to be that child friend. So make more child. Make more children, right? That's my, that's my case of making more children. That said, you know, it's not nice for children to be alone. But when a child grows up by themselves all alone, they get very selfish. And that is what happens when any of us try to do this on our own. God never called us to do this thing alone. And if you try to do it on your own, you will become self-serving and self-centered. And that is not a place God wants any of us to be. He wants us to be other-centered, other-focused, helping, building. Right. All involved and offering to the Lord. It was tied to the agricultural activities. It was so, to them, it was so important. When the fruit, first fruit came out, they tied a string to that fruit and they never partook. They took it as an offering. Anybody here? Your, your, your first fruit you didn't eat? I remember the first time we get mango, I give it to mommy, right? Everything first, we never ate it, we never ate the first at all. Any single fruit that came out of any, or anything, cook everything, mommy had to get first, right? Because we believe in first fruits. Good. Let's read this together. It is written, the first man became a living person, the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural and the spirit. The first man is from earth. The second man is from heaven. So we know there's a pattern God is setting up there. Second Colossians 16, 17. And this is going to be a base of scripture for us. So don't let anyone condemn you. Verse 17. These rules are only shadows. This is a shadow of what is to come. Good. I'm going to ask you the question again. Now let's go back to that multiple choice question. God gave mankind a feast in the Old Testament, but the New Testament says, we are not under law, but we are under grace. Should we be doing more than they did? Doing less. Live the same way or it doesn't matter to God. I'll tell you straight off, D is wrong. Right? We know for sure D is wrong. Remember I said one of these things is not like the other. One doesn't belong, that doesn't belong at all. And I'll tell you why. If you leave a man, you see... In the, old, in the Old Testament, did God leave them alone to make up their own rules? We live in a society now where what I think is right. Now, that has, there's a, a place for ex expressing yourself, but there's another place to realize that we did not make the rules. And if you think you can make up your own way to get to heaven, I'll have news for you when you pass from this world into the other. If you do not follow God's way to get into heaven, what did Jesus say? I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. If you don't follow his way, when you pass from this world into the other, do you think you can make yourself magically push your way into heaven? Yes or no? There is no back door to heaven. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And this is something we, begin, we have to begin to understand. COVID really put a dent in God's in, in our own perception of what is right and what is wrong. Somebody told us it was okay not to gather. Now I know we have to be very careful and we have to practice all the social etiquette, but we remind ourselves that the, the, the command to gather did not end. The command to assemble didn't end and the, 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 the things that God set up wasn't for, do you think it's for God's good we're doing all of this? It's for our own good. He knows if you leave a man, you, you keep just doing what you want. You will forget. And it will slide. And let me tell you something. The road to, back, to, be, to backsliding is not a... It's not a... It's a... You all get it? The road to backsliding is a slow, steady one. And you're going down, you're going down. I miss one Sunday. I miss two Sundays. I good. I, miss, I don't need to go to church. Right? So you begin to follow the ways of the world. There is a biblical pattern set up. There is a call and there's a place for gathering. Now, it's not, did you see me make up anything there? I showed it to you definitely in the word. He says he called. It is his holy days. Are we supposed to celebrate the feast? No. But we are supposed to follow a pattern. He already said there were times. What did he do? He set up a pattern. The pattern is there are days we are supposed to set aside for God. And no government, nobody on planet Earth can tell us different. Now it will be 
It will, it will be a different way. But I'll tell you something. If we do the consequence of not teaching the next generation, the importance of gathering, of worshiping, of celebrating together will be a self-serving, self-centered generation. Whose pattern are you following? And I'll, ex I'll explain that by saying this. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of what? Death. We, like I said, we live in a world where people think, I can make up the rules. When it comes to following God, there's a pattern he has already set up. And if we don't get ourselves aligned with God's pattern, we will go down the, the wide path. The path that leads to destruction. And this, the, the thing about it is this. We live in a world where the deceit runs deep. The lies of the devil run deep. It's literally woven in the fabric of the culture that we live in. I want you to look at your child and you tell me, are they self-centered or self-serving? In Deuteronomy chapter 6, God was giving the Israelites an instruction. He says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Let's read verse 7. What does it say? And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. The pastor should teach them diligently. Let's read it again. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto the Sunday school teacher should teach them diligently. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. The instruction to fathers was, it is your responsibility to teach your child the word. And clearly we see the influence. The father has the more, the, the godly father... The God-fearing father will have the greatest impact on the family, not the God-fearing mother. The mothers stand in the gap and do the best they can, and they try very hard. But the fathers have that role and responsibility to grow up. Do you know it was the by Like I said, remember I said last time, by 12, 13, these children were supposed to memorize the entire Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, all the first five books, the entire thing. That is what they had to teach them, the memory of it. We have to get to the point where we realize that if we don't teach the generation who's living in our house, the people outside our house will teach them. They'll teach them, believe you me. And if your child doesn't understand the difference between right and wrong in your house, they will go outside and somebody will teach them a different right from wrong, you know. That's why I say, what's your child? What do you want for your child? What do you want for your grandchild, niece and nephew? Sometimes because of love, we let things slide. Not so? And we are mothers, we know it. They do anything wrong and all because you love them, you're overlooking it. So, of course, you can't be a, a stranger in person all the time, but we have to understand there are critical things that our children do that is honor God, that if we allow it to continue, they will turn into monsters. They will turn into children who don't know how to honor God. God was said, remember what I said, we want a strong church. For the strong church to happen, we need a strong family. For the strong family to happen, we need strong marriages. For the strong marriages to happen, we need strong people in God. There's a whole flow. There's a flow. And if the family isn't honoring God, I'll tell you, if your family isn't honoring God, there's a very strong possibility when you come into the house of God, the temptation would be when they come here not to honor God. And I'll, I'll give a perfect example, although I know the person I want to speak to may not like it. Uh, Brother Dave grew up in a home. There were four sons and two daughters. And they were quite, um, what is the word to use? They were, they were people who grew up, literally, he grew up just like me, but I'll tell you something. Every single one of them serve God in the house of God. All of them are good husbands, solid fathers. You understand? 
The track record speaks for itself. Go back and look. Anybody you know who had strong marriages and strong families, what happens to their children? What happens to their children? They end up, apple don't fall far from tree. Not so? If you put in the work, I have a friend, she said, you know, Cindy, I like, Gil, all this work with all this school work, every single evening is work. She said, you know, I put in when my children was young and, I, and, I'm, and I'm benefiting now. It is work just as hard as we work to cause our children and want them to come first in test. We should be working double as hard, triple as hard to make sure these children understand God's pattern to honor him. Because if they don't get it in your house, they will go, like I said, they will go outside and somebody else will teach them something else. And what will be the consequences? The, 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 the thing about it I want us to get though, COVID, is a, it, it not only put us in physical danger, it put all of us in spiritual danger. And we didn't even realize the effects it would have. Anybody seeing real negative effects on families right now? Anybody here know families in disroar, in, in uproar and dis strife, all sorts of things now because of COVID? It didn't just happen, you know. The slide to backsliding is a slow one. And if we choose to ignore God's pattern, we will pay the consequences, the very big consequences. Now, what kind of child do you want? Here's the question I want to ask you, right? Anybody ever heard the joke? Uh, these two men were in the forest and they came upon a bear. So they started to run. And one partner said to the next partner, um, boy, you's a praying man. You grew up in church. Start a prayer now. What kind of prayer do you think he started to pray? Lord, bless this food that that bear is about to receive. He said, Brett, I can run faster than you. And he got, and he leave the poor man there to get, to get eaten up, right? Now, everybody has a different, like I say, everybody has a different take on that whole taking care of your brother stuff and we remind ourselves of the statistic fathers have the responsibility it is a hard thing like i said i told somebody it is a hard thing to be a parent it is a hard thing to be in a, a position such a position where you could form a life where you could determine their success or their failure it is a place and a position we've been all called to, but we can do it if we honor God and we, honor, we follow his pattern for family, for worship, we will produce children who honor God. If we do not flip side, if we do not follow God's pattern and we follow the pattern of the world, our children will turn out just like the world. What is the world that we live in now? Is it getting any better? Are the morals improving because we have the internet and they have access to better knowledge? Are people, are their characteristic traits improving? Are your co-workers more honest? Are your neighbors more kind and loving? Is there more strife or less strife in the world? You ever when, when someone meet people who just like confusion? Some people, you know, they need real deliverance, right? But we remind ourselves that the pattern that God set up, I want to just drive it into you. You are where you are by the grace of God. There was a, a preacher, you know, um, he, he, a very famous preacher, and he was walking down the road. And this person was with him, and he said, look at that vagrant and beggar. And he said, you see, brother, let me tell you something. That is me, but for the grace of God. But for the grace of God, we are alive, we are well, we are in the land of the living, and we have our right minds. Let me just let you know one small thing. The devil hates you. He, he hates your family. He hates your marriage. And he is going to do. He came to do three things. What are they? Steal, kill, destroy. His job is to mash up. He cannot be your friend. Right? You know, you ever watch this TV show where they said they could make friends with the devil or friend. They, like I say, the culture of this world tells you that evil could be a pal on your body not at all right so we, we allow ourselves to understand that evil is out there and if we do not prepare ourselves and our next generation coming to face that evil the world will chew them up spit them out 
as garbage and refuse. If we ourselves, that's why Pastor said, I've begun, I've begun to understand the real, real, real significance of morning prayer. There is such a thing as, you know, there's, there's a quench, the fiery darts of the wicked one. There's a quenching that we need to do every morning because while you are sleeping, the devil is planning tricks. Not for any, do not even think for a moment that because you are saved and a Christian, the devil won't attack you. Not at all. He's going to attack us. And we have to learn how to be strong in the Lord and fight. Otherwise, you will get up and just listen to emotions. So I get up in a bad mood and I want to be cranky and I want to be angry and everybody else has to suffer because I feel like I want to be how I feel. That is not of God because we know the enemy, he sets us up to obey our feelings. I, hello, do you think I feel every morning to get up and come to church? It is much easier, Sister Michelle, to stay home in your house and relax. It is much easier to do that. It takes an act of self-will to discipline yourself. And we remind ourselves he has called us to be disciplined disciples. It is a hard thing to hear because we live in a world where everything slides. But I'll tell you, that straight and narrow path, if we don't stick near to it and straight on it, we are going to veer to the left or to the right. What happens when you're driving on the road and you veer to the left or the right? What's going to happen? What's bound to happen? An accident. It's bound to happen. You veer long enough off that highway, you're going to fall off the highway. You're going to get into the accident. So I remind you prepare yourselves for war every morning when you get up begin to declare and begin to speak the word over yourself and your family you send them out with the money you send them with the food you send them with the physical thing but what about the spiritual covering every morning anoint them before they leave your house how much of us have family worship but andy did i have any more slides do you have family listen these are things that seem so simple simple when they worship god in the feast everybody took part it wasn't like mommy in one room and daddy in one room it was the whole family it was a maxine it was a family affair family worship i know i grew up having worship they would I tell you something there were times car it's like mommy and daddy only want to have devotion for the children when we're ready to do something important right so <laughs> Let me put it this way. It was, not, it was not easy every day, right? But, you know, when you live in a house, I don't know what kind of household you grew up in, but in our household, when mommy and daddy spoke, really and truly, you have no say here, you have no right. Get an order otherwise, right? That's the way, it, <laughs> that's the way we grew up, right? Now, I'm not saying that's the only way to parent your child, but I am saying family worship in your house is a powerful way to begin to get your mind refocused on what's important you spend enough time out of the world and nothing presses the maxine you will forget about it you know why did god say they had to celebrate the seven feasts every year every single year because they had to remember what they had to do they had to practice things what are your customs we all have a custom, but i'll encourage you it is not, some of us didn't grow up in a home where there was family devotions but i'll tell you it, that is those Jewish families, they stuck together, their children stuck to the wood. There's a lot of binding that takes place when you, your children see you worship God. When your children see you read the word, not the pastor read the word, you read the word in your house. There's something about power of you reading the word aloud in your own house. How often does your family gather together to worship God? I didn't say worship god separately how uh, when they celebrated the feast it was a family affair it was a community affair how often does your family get together to worship god like i said this is the pattern that god set up it was a family affair it was a family getting together to worship god because he knew there is something about a strong family you all know i grew up in a tight family I don't know what I literally do not know about my mother. I never heard my mother and father ever have a quarrel. It seems impossible to you, but it is to me. Of course, they had their disagreements. Come on, I didn't grow up in a perfect home, but you know, they, anybody here ever hear your neighbor quarrel? And somebody, I never forget we had a neighbor, and I don't know what the man do for a whole hour with the quarrel. I didn't hear the words, but all I know, she was shouting, and those people never shouted. You know, sometimes some people trip. When you grow up in a family and you're, t and you're tight and you love each other and you worship God together, that brings a kind of strength. Karen and I are serving God. We, we, we lived out of our parents' homes for years because of we attended UEB. That was before we were married. 
We still stuck to what we were taught when we were younger. You think I, there wasn't temptation? Of course. You all know the kind of life people live when we go. When you come out of your parents' house, as somebody says, like, monkey come out of prison. Right? If you inculcate in them the things of God when they come out of your house, they will naturally want to do. Even if they want to do the wrong thing, they will know the right thing and they will be convicted of it. This morning, I remind us that God wants us to be a people who follows his patterns. You have grandchildren, good, a good. They come by you for holidays, come, let's go. Let's have family devotions. An aunt, an uncle, any single child in your purview, anyone you have influence on them, encourage them to pray, to worship, to listen to worship music. All this stuff that we do to help them remember the things that are important. Amen? Right. Piece of advice. And it's not Psalms 1119, it's Psalms 119. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. There is no success in the Christian life without being an absolute follower of the word. And that comes by knowing the word. Every single day as there's a day, read your Bible. Again, seems like a simple, small thing, but these things keep us close to God. God chose Abraham. Here's what he said. He said, I have singled him out because he will direct his sons and their families to keep in the way of the Lord by doing what is right. These men stood out because of their faith. And God knew when he called them that they would teach the next generation the right thing to do. This morning, as we end, and I mean, it, it's directed to fathers, but mothers, right? Individuals, you came into this house this morning of course I, i'm sure everybody going to celebrate real celebrate but i want to remind us that he set up a pattern and if you follow god's pattern you are going to have success in your family and that's what we want we want families who love god who love each other and who are bound together by love and prayer amen let's stand glory to god but and that's the last slide right hallelujah i know like i said this wasn't the most exciting of topics but it is a topic that is vital for all of us to understand the next generation in our house needs help and the one to provide the help we are the ones amen glory to god so father as I lift your people before you, I thank you for bringing them into this house. I thank you for the place they are. I thank you for every family you represented this morning. Every family listening to my voice. Every person who is in a place of confusion, a, a place of uncertainty. Every, every marriage on the rocks. Every family in disarray. I lift them before you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, we look at your word and we see you set up a pattern that you wanted us to follow. You set up a pattern teaching us how to honor you with our lives and to teach the next generation. So, Father, we make a commitment today to follow you with all of our heart, our soul, our mind. And, Lord, teach. We make the commitment to teach the next generation as you teach us to teach others, to teach those in our home how to serve God, how to worship God, how to honor God, that Father, on the day when that trumpet is sound, we will all be raptured. That there's not a family listening to my voice where anyone will be left behind. That there is not a marriage. Father, we, we just pray in a special way for the unsaved spouses. That, Lord, the influence, the power, the anointing of the Holy Ghost will flow through the saved spouse. That, Lord, God's salvation will visit our homes in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, on that day when that trumpet sounds, that we will all be found a prepared and ready people. A people who know your pattern and who are following every, uh, every single day hard after you. Give us the strength, the courage, the ability, the discernment to help others who are struggling to help our friends, to help our family members, those who are struggling and don't know how to be good fathers to their children. Help us to help others, that we will be blessed to be a blessing to others. I pray in the name of Jesus that, Father, you will be a shield around the marriages in this church. 
you will be a shield around the families in this church in the name of Jesus. That you would quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And all the plans of the enemy to mash up. But it is your will. Marriage was your idea. So all the marriages, Lord, we pray that you would secure. You would draw spouses closer. You would cause compassion, understanding. You would cause forgiveness to flow. All the things to flow. That families will begin to work well together. I pray for the children, the next generation, those who are writing tests, those who have exams. Make them the head, not the tail above and not beneath. I pray for the grandchildren, the aunts, the uncles. Lord, wherever they find a way to influence the next generation for following God's pattern, give them the grace, the courage, the ability, the discernment to know what's going on in the lives of the children around them. And help them follow Christ. Follow hard after Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Reverend Mohammed. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I know that um, uh, the